Hello and welcome to The Lucky Roll, an eclectic channel for eclectic games. And today we're going to be unboxing Anti-Monopoly. Now this was a game that caught my eye uh, because it reminded me of the person who invented Monopoly, a woman called Elizabeth Maggie. Uh, she invented it way back. Um, I remember talking about her uh, in our Fallout Monopoly video. But what this is, this is an update of the original game that she created. Uh, when she made this game, it was originally a warning against the excesses of capitalism. And um, what actually happened was that she would make the game and they would be kind of reproduced and sold to a certain degree and one other person who claimed to be the inventor of Monopoly, I uh, can't actually think of his name now, took the rules, called it Monopoly and produced it himself and Parker Brothers I believe bought it off him and it wasn't until I'd say a significant amount of years later that they realized the real inventor of the game was a woman called Elizabeth Maggie who actually created the game in a different guise with a different name. Anyway, I digress. This game is an interesting take on it because it takes her kind of anti-capitalist uh, fair economy message and his, the, the, the Monopoly game itself where you're just basically trying to devour everything and puts the two kind of ideologies against each other. So you have half the players will be uh, competitors where they sell their goods at the market price to make a profit and the other half would be monopolists who are there to wipe out their competitors so that they can fix prices above competitive levels and make excessive profits. So I found it quite intriguing that it was kind of a mash of the two of them and put together. Now, it's quite a cheap game. It was only 30 euros and it was a bit of an impulsive buy on my part. So the components are not going to be the best because of the actual cost involved. But I am curious and I want to see what's actually in this box. And it's, a, it's an idea I want to try as well. I mean, it just, it struck me as quite intriguing to have two versions of Monopoly played at the same time. So with no further ado, let's open up this box and see what we have inside the anti-Monopoly box. So opening it for the very first time, we are greeted with a kind of a cardboard sheet placement. I'm not certain what this is. Um, it's fairly flimsy. It's not proper cardboard. It could be just kind of excess packaging. We have here the actual instructions. So it's only four pages long. So of course nearly everyone knows how to play, play Monopoly at this stage. So um, do not play this game like Monopoly. Competitors have the advantage in the beginning but not monopolists can overtake them later. To protect their lead, the competitor's best strategy is to raise cash under the rules, no borrowing, and buy up all the property they can to stop the creation of monopolies. Competitors may want to trade with each other to block the monopolists while remembering that they are also playing against each other to win. Money distribution is tight, so keep the game balanced to keep the game balanced, so budget your money carefully. So it's interesting that um, it's not going to be a case where you break the bank as it were, because in some insane games of Monopoly, people have actually had to get the bank to write out IOUs to the players because they have siphoned up so much money from it. So there's 26 kind of specific rules. Uh, there's also a two hour game version of it. So it's, um, I suppose if you, well, nearly everyone has a box of Monopoly at home. So if you need to kind of check some of the ground rules, you can check that. But so that's the instruction book. We have here, of course, the board itself. Now the board is, well, I gotta be honest, it's an ugly color. It's kind of uh, yellow. No, I mean, it probably reflects the aesthetic of the game at the time. But what's interesting here is you have competitor and monopolist and you have start. So you collect 100 when landing on this or passing the space. It's all set in the US. So we have New Orleans, we have Los Angeles. We have Chicago, Philadelphia, we have Boston, we have Washington, we have San Francisco, and we have New York, of course, being the premier, um, the premier spaces. Uh, what's interesting, though, is the spaces are the same. So you're not kind of getting three different streets in Los Angeles. Oh, yes, you are. Sorry, my mistake. I didn't see the part. So you do. You have Hollywood Boulevard, uh, Wilshire Boulevard, and Sunset Boulevard. So yes, sorry, uh, normally the street names are up here, so that's why I made the mistake. Uh, so yeah, basically the competitors have got to stop monopolists, which are here, creating 
uh, monopolies all of all these different streets and um, you still have the US bus company you have the US railroad you have the trucking company and you have the US airport you still have uh, monopolists go to prison competitors go to price war now that's interesting so there is a price war part here so of course you have the si the sightseeing tour you have prison and you have a price war here which I suppose um, would undermine the market value for the uh, competitors making the game slightly harder for them and you have the anti-monopoly foundation instead of the free parking space which is C rule 21 so I'm actually curious about that so let's have a quick look at rule 21 um, competitors roll one die if one you collect $25 if two you collect $50 otherwise no grant no collection monopolists pay $160 into the foundation and payment is made to the treasurer so there's a different uh, kind of twist on the free parking space because I mean I know an awful lot of people would have a house rule where the free parking space is that basically taxes go in there and whoever lands on free parking gets all the taxes uh, kind of something to spice up the game of monopoly for people who are not quite so purist about it so that's the board itself i don't like the yellow color um but i suppose it is kind of reminiscent of 1910s type of thing so uh, a strange aesthetic but um the board itself is okay it's not flimsy it's not it's not very thick but it's not uh it's not desperately poor quality either it's it's fine so apart from the color the board itself is fine however this is where you're going to see the cost cutting measures because this is just paper money so yeah the paper money itself is pretty ugly to handle um this is this is bargain basement kind of quality stuff, but uh, it would be easy enough to swap this paper money out with, say, paper money from another Monopoly set if this was a game that you love. So it's all in ones, um, ones, fives, tens, fifteens, twenties, fifties, and one hundreds. And there's some five hundred dollar dollar notes there as well. You have the playing pieces. So this is interesting. We have, of course, the two standard die, but you have a kind of a, a big pawn playing piece and you have some small um, other little token playing pieces so I'm not sure they're kind of they're distinctly different but they don't have the the charm of the thimble or the uh, the iron or the Scottish Yorkshire Terrier dog or anything like that so it's uh, I presume they could have a distinct function each or they're just uh, a cheap way of making two different tokens making them in two different color plastics and uh, needing three less molds to make it but nevertheless those are your playing pieces not the not the most beautiful aesthetic looking thing but nevertheless you know if this is a game that you do fall in love with there's nothing stopping you from blinging it out yourself and we have here houses which are just standard orange houses so I don't know why they've gone with this color aesthetic uh, perhaps Parker Brothers would have the um, colors of the ho houses and hotels in the main game copyrighted or something but uh, and these I presume are the hotels so they're yeah they're fairly fairly basic plastic and of course we have here the actual cards themselves now these are not paper um, but they are kind of severely cut cards so uh, yeah they're not very nice there's a kind of an ugly aesthetic to it um, so we have the gas company here and the US gas company here the bus company we have the electric company all the ones we know we have here of course Boston um, Harvard Square so you can see here it's got the standard kind of monopoly information on it but um, it's got the same color scheme as the actual board which uh you know to me is just it's just not nice looking it's got an ugly yellow worn out aesthetic which i suppose is supposed to reflect the age but nevertheless it just doesn't look nice uh we have here competitor and monopolist cards so these are pretty kind of ugly looking as well um so it's a bit of a shame really uh, I don't know why they went for such a kind of a base level now I've never seen the original game so perhaps 
these are deliberate uh, aesthetic design choices on the original game by Ma uh, Elizabeth Maggie. So, I mean, even the even the drawings do kind of seem kind of classic or kind of art. Well, classic or maybe archaic a little bit. So maybe that's the aesthetic they were going for. That um, it's it's a, a, a faithful representation of the original original game, maybe in some aspects. But um, I gotta be honest, it's not easy on the eye. But uh, having a look at some of these, so you have two go to starts. So this is the Monopolist, and of course, as you can see. The Monopolist is uh, kind of a strange looking fellow, whereas the competitor is a much happier looking fellow. So um, one is fat and kind of sinister looking happy, and the other is thin and kind of normal looking happy. So I guess you can judge for yourself which are the good guys and bad guys here. So and for some of the Monopolist ones, you bribed the lawyer in the antitrust division to approve a murder. A non-secretary blew the whistle on the deal. Go to prison. You and other hotel owners charge Justice Department lawyers the same rent no matter how crummy the rooms. That did it. The investigation uncovered a conspiracy to rig prices. Go to prison. Go to Pennsylvania Avenue. You claimed you invented an indigenous shovel you saw in an Aztec museum. The fraud and patulent you obtained in it has now been invalidated by the courts. Pay $75. Because of public outcry, a tax loophole created especially for you by a neighborly politician has been abolished. Pay the treasurer $75. Well, of course, I think the treasurer is the bank in this case, um, rather than the actual bank. So, you schemed to monopolize the sun as an energy source, but it didn't work. Nice try, but you can't win them all. Uh, an illegal campaign contribution you made to Senator uh, R.N. Adler went by mistake to Ralph Nader. Just plead no contest and pay a fine of $50 to treasurer. And uh, without competition at home, your firm became sloppy. Now you're being outsold by foreign goods. Pay $25. So it's um, a distinct kind of chance card for both the monopolists and the competitors. We'll have a look at some of the competitor ones. So two go to start cards. Uh, the, con the government has broken up a price fixing conspiracy. Now everybody is cutting prices. Go to price war. The antitrust division has blocked a monopolist from taking over your firm. You are still in business. Play on. Uh, go to Pennsylvania Avenue. Congress granted a big corporation a big subsidy in the public interest, but your request for a little emergency aid went nowhere. Pay $75 to the treasurer. Uh, with many big companies avoiding taxes through loopholes, the government has raised your taxes to make up the difference. Feel patriotic, <laughs> but pay $75 to the treasurer. And from what I can see here, there's an image copyright on it going back as far as 1977. So that might explain the, um, the actual... Uh, the actual aesthetic of the cards here so as you can see like 1977 would be the original kind of copyright image so maybe this is a kind of a, a successive reprint of the actual game which might account for its um, aesthetic because well graphic design in the 1970s isn't quite the same as graphic design 50 years later here now in the 1920s so um, that essentially is the Monopoly and anti-Monopoly, excuse me, game. Um, I'll try and get a game of this in at some stage because it has, like I said, aroused my curiosity. So as always, if you enjoyed this little unboxing, please like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. And until next time, good luck, God bless, and um, well, just make sure you don't roll any doubles. Sorry, just one quick little thing uh, I noticed. I figured out what these little dividers are for. They slide in here into the box so you can sort out your little bits and pieces and sections of the Monopoly board. So that was one little mystery solved after I turned off the camera. Anyway, again, uh, thank you for this uh, putting up with this little uh, uh, post scripture part of the video. Uh, so as always, until next time, good luck, God bless, and... Uh, Stay safe.